In this video, I discuss Lab 9 on shack cube interferometry. The shack cube interferometer is an unequal path interferometer that can be used to test the surface figure of concave surfaces. The interference patterns we see when we're measuring a test surface are often a combination of these third order aberrations. In this lab, I examine the surface quality of a long focal length reference mirror and a short focal length curved mirror by observing the wavefront error and the interferograms due to various third order aberrations. First, I used a long focal length reference mirror as the test surface. If the center of curvature of the test mirror perfectly aligns with that of the convex lens and their corresponding surfaces are perfectly spherical, then no fringes should be formed at the interference plane. In reality, it would be impossible to manufacture a mirror with a perfect surface, and so areas of imperfection arise in which the surface of the mirror and consequently the reflected wavefront are not perfectly spherical. This leads to residual fringes appearing in the nulled interference pattern as observed here. Here the residual fringes are caused by tilt, which I will explain in more detail later, and spherical aberration due to the departure of the mirror surface from uniform sphericity. To further examine the surface quality of the test mirror, I observed the effects of deep focus and compared them to my results from the simulation lab. I found that the number of fringes increased while the fringe spacing decreased as I moved away from the best focus in either direction. I also noticed how the lower order fringes were thicker than the higher order fringes. This became more prominent with greater amounts of defocus. The defocused interferograms demonstrate the residual tilt I mentioned earlier. In front of the focus, the center fringes are vertically off-centered, and behind the focus, we see this in the opposite direction. This indicates tilt about the y-axis, or x-tilt, in the test surface. For an ideal surface, tilt would produce a straight line fringe pattern along the corresponding axis. The fringes I observed when I added wide tilt to the test mirror were not straight lines but had a slight curve. They were also angled as a result of the residual x tilt in the mirror's surface. However, the fringes seen with the x tilt appear as we would expect them since there is no residual y tilt in the mirror. When I added defocus to the x tilted mirror, I saw the center of the fringe pattern shift horizontally. The zero order fringe moved closer to the spot center as I added more defocus. In the next part, I repeated the same procedures with a short focal length curved mirror whose nulled interferogram is shown here. Random waves in the fringes are due to local surface error in the mirror. Overall, the defocus indicates a weak presence, if any, of residual tilt. The fringes I observed for the Y tilt and X tilt are generally what I expected to see. As I added more tilt, the number of fringes increased and the fringe spacing decreased. While the fringes are nearly straight lines and parallel to their corresponding axis. Here I show the effects of adding defocus to the mirror with both X and Y tilt. With X tilt, the circular fringe pattern due to defocus is shifted horizontally, but with Y tilt, this circular pattern is shifted vertically. Both in the simulated lab and the physical lab, I observed the same general fringe pattern shown here with defocus for the shearing and shack cube interferometers. The key point is that the shack cube interferometers measure the wavefront error directly, while shearing interferometers measure the difference in wavefront error between two wavefronts given by the derivative, which conceptually makes sense because the slope of a function, which is quadratic in x and y, is a straight line. 